BMW 7 Series. Jack did a video on the i7, which is the electrified variant, and he will talk about all the trim levels in the shop. There's something for everyone here. And I will say this, it's not a car that you're going to look at from a practical perspective. This is not a Toyota Camry and it's not trying to be. It is a lease only vehicle for someone that has the disposable income for one of the best luxury sedan experiences you can get in the $100,000 price category. And I'm gonna talk more about that and the pros and cons as I discuss the interior and exterior briefly. The outside is definitely there to be different. It's trying to fly under the radar with most of the paint colors, but it's also trying not to be the traditional sedan shape. And if you're someone that likes the modern BMW design, you're probably gonna like it. It is not the most classically like good looking sedan. It is very awkward in some angles, but you know, again, that's all subjective. Interior space is really where you're spending your time. And I feel like this is where BMW stood out. They set the tone here in terms of material choice, design, technology that's going to trickle down into future models. And you're gonna see the things that work really well here and the things that don't. And because you're leasing this anywhere from 100 grand all the way up to 180,000, you can really uh, change what you want and what you don't want. When you look at the configurator, this is where it gets a bit more exciting because if you like material choice, you like quality leather, material, fit and finish, alloys, the inlays, this is where you can really start to go nuts. And you appreciate the fact that they have a fabric and leather option and very good fabric and leather options. Everything is perfectly coated in textured stitching, headliner material. You really, really appreciate this once you start to look at the attention to detail on the inside from speaker grills to lower door plastics and leathers. I mean, there's not much in this car that's not covered with some type of really quality premium material, including the floor mats, which look like a carpet that you would have in your house. Now, in terms of technology, you know, this is a blessing or a curse. You know, you're buying a luxury vehicle like this to throw it away in three years, so you're not concerned about the cost to own and maintenance and what's gonna break. You know, this car already has a check engine light and you know, it's only got like 3000 miles on it. So again, you know, you're, you're adding this com complication, so you're gonna be expecting some problems. So when you open the higher trims, you can have these automatic opening and closing doors, which requires sensors to make sure it doesn't blast into another car. There's a button on the dash. There's a button on the door to essentially unlatch the door so you can open it manually. And then there's a physical redundant connection with a cable to unlatch the car if the electronics break. So you have three different ways to open the door. Again, that's a, the, the overwhelming motif of what this car is trying to do. It's technology for technology's sake iDrive is consolidated. I would say a lot of the technology is consolidated into the screens. You're removing a majority of the physical controls, which is a blessing or curse. I found myself more distracted in this car than most cars I've driven recently, and that's because you're constantly you know, playing around with stuff. You have to take your eyes off the road to interact with this screen. But once you set up your shortcuts, you essentially don't touch it anymore once you figure out that half the stuff in here you don't even use. The cup holder design, the storage in the door, and the center armrest is greatly reduced compared to some of their more commodity vehicles from BMW because this is an executive sedan. It's designed for somebody to and from work or to the airport. So again, it's about luxury versus overall usability. So they've sacrificed some of that. But the comfort, usability, the way that this cabin isolates you, it's one of the quietest cars that I've driven. Uh, I would say, you know, in this range, you're looking at the Genesis G90, the Mercedes S-Class and this, and you could probably say, you know, the upper end Audis as well, but this is definitely on another level, including the Bowers and Wilkins. You know, we test all the audio systems. BMW is moving away from Harman as a brand and using Bowers as their base audio. And now to get the upper end, the real Bowers, you have to get the diamond set up. And in this car, it's about 5Gs. And when you look at the graphs, you really realize they spent real engineering money and time into do, doing the audio in this car. And it's about as good as you're gonna get in terms of an audio or audio experience and testing space. Uh, the other car that really stood out was the BMW iX with the Bauer. So there's a consistent pattern here where they've put audio first in these cars. Now I would say that, you know, because of where the screen is at, the center speaker is definitely compromised in this car, but really, you know, in terms of music, the door design is excellent. You have a, a vertical array of speakers from the lower part to the upper part. You have three and 40 audio, which puts subs in the seats. You know, there's all this attention to detail here that you're looking at from a technology perspective. And when you're cruising on the highway, you will not be disappointed, which we're gonna talk about during the drive, but let's head into the shop and Jack's gonna hit you with the highlights. 
In the shop with the 2024 BMW 7 Series, this is the G70 generation. And this is supposed to be the first car on this generation of Claw, a new generation that was co-developed with its BEV counterparts. The 7 Series is supposed to be the ultimate expression of what that current generation BMW can do, the ultimate expression of luxury. And if you are not gonna be cynical for a moment, and Mark and I are often guilty of this and can ignore a lot of the stigma associated with the 7 Series, whether it be a depreciation princess, a disposable product, or the car that your dad's boss fired him from, you know, if you really look at the engineering, what they can accomplish is unbelievable. So for this generation of 7 Series, it is longer, just like the 5 Series than it used to be. It's like five or six inches longer. But more importantly, from a dynamic perspective, it has wider tracks, front and rear. The front being substantially widened versus the outgoing one by a couple inches, and the rear is slightly less than an inch. And it is far more rigid than the outgoing car. This is a true multi-link setup, front and rear. The rear is a five-link. Everything is aluminum, as you can see. Everything is covered up. And they want quite a distance for this generation, increasing the amount of NVH material and overall body rigidity. Body rigidity, of course, helping when it comes to handling and limit handling characteristics. But in a luxury car, it's about quieting down the entire cabin of the vehicle. It has air ride front and rear as standard. You have adaptive dampers that are independently controlled for each one of the corners as standard as well. The air springs front and rear have the ability to lower the car in sport and on the highway for aerodynamic setups. And then in comfort and in ingress and egress modes, it'll raise up the car. It does a very, very good job controlling the body motion of this car. It's also helping to negate some of the pitch and roll. This is a big, heavy car. And this 750E that we're under, it's a 5,600 pound and change car. Big boat. But through the use of the air springs and the electronically active dampers, along with the rear steer module, which is an option in the 750E and the lower class or lower trim level 7 series, really help this car feel ultra, ultra nimble. It has a VGRS rack, which you're used to in this generation of car, so the turn in's really, really quick. Yes, the inputs are not all that natural, but if you think about it, what does this car have to accomplish from a technical perspective? It has to be that ultimate expression of luxury for a sedan. So really, really quiet. It has to be maneuverable. It has to be able to sit at 155 miles an hour down the highway and do lane changes, like sudden lane changes at those speeds where the car doesn't get upset. It has to do all of that. So it, it by definition is a compromised driving machine. And to be fair, no one is buying a seven series for the ultimate feedback and limit handling, but it still has to be able to do it. The other thing it has in the 760 variant is the 48 volt sway bars, which have the ability to also disconnect themselves entirely to maximize ride comfort. And then when you start loading up the car, either front or rear in transitions or in corners, they reconnect and add some stability to the car and a little bit less heave and float. So what about drivetrains? You have a couple different options. This car can be had with the, in the 740 variant with the B58, the TU variant, so the most recent version. That can be had as either pure rear wheel drive or all wheel drive. You can have this, the 750E, which is the B58 paired to a electric motor that sits between the gearbox and the engine and a sub 20 kilowatt hour battery pack. The electric motor adds a huge amount of power. This car now makes 470 or 80 horsepower. It's good for zero to 60 in the mid fours. A substantial over 100 horsepower increase over the base 740i. And of course, that electric motor helps in low down acceleration with all that instantaneous torque. I will say, and Mark's gonna bring this up as well in the drive, it is not the most seamless actuation between gas and electricity, just to be entirely honest. Then of course, you can get this in the V8 variant with the S68, an engine we've talked about to death. All of the internal combustion versions of the 7 Series use a ZF 8-speed gearbox. Something to talk about, and we talked about in our recent i5 video and our comparisons as a Lucid and the M60i video as well. The thing about this generation of Klar and really all this generation BMWs is they are co-developed with their BEV variants. So in the case of the 7 Series, there's the i7. And BMW, according to the people I've spoken to and the engineers and everybody, they don't view these cars as entirely different vehicles. Being co-developed, they want the driving experience to be entirely seamless to their customer. So everything from the ride frequencies to the handling characteristics of the gas versions and the electric versions are largely the same. The big difference is do you want to be able to plug it in or do you want to fill it up with gas? 
And that is an interesting approach. Obviously, there are some compromises on the EV side of things, but for this gas car, it is very impressive. So with that, Mark and I are gonna go take this for a quick drive. Business meetings. I do, Mark. And we're late. You're gonna put me in a sport mode. Oh God, please don't. Uh, Activate sport mode in my land yacht. Fine. Yeah. See, I need to dominate the boardroom, and I need to dominate my squash opponents and my pickleball opponents. And if I'm going to be respected in all avenues of my life. I need a matte silver BMW Bowers and Wilkins, a red interior, and a B58 paired to a hybrid drivetrain. Mm -hmm. well, so you've driven this car a lot, Jack. I mean, and I feel like an apex businessman predator when I'm behind the wheel of this car. People get the f out of my way. I'm comfortable. It's quiet, and on the scale, so cars, are, you know, to me, there's cars can be nauseating, mm -hmm. cars can be terrible, and cars can be incredibly joyful. This went straight through nauseating to incredibly enjoyable because I just feel like I can run a small business and fire you whenever I, I need to. <laughs> a small business of 5,000 people. Yeah. That, you know, I'm going to take public, have all my money, and then fire everyone I don't like. See, like when I'm behind the wheel of this car, I don't care that it doesn't drive super dynamically. I just care that I'm comfortable and that I have a incredibly baller audio system and I can get a massage and it's quiet and everything works the way it's supposed to tell I, me I'm wrong I, I, I'm not gonna tell you you're wrong I, I you know driving all these luxury cars recently you start to appreciate the the really good things that BMW does and then the things that this car you know like the rear wheel steering instantly shrinks it down it's immediate responses for the size that it is that its ability to go from like you said nauseatingly comfortable and boat like all the way up to decent body control for the size and what it's attempting to do to me this car is something you're going to roll over in a lease obviously and you need you to should put... absolutely never buy this car no it's no amazing. well obviously yeah. obviously it's a lease machine but you know like it is the perfect highway cruiser um, you know, regardless of drivetrain and all that stuff, once you really get on a straight road with, or in traffic like where we live typically, uh, this thing is absolutely amazing at what it does. And even on a back road, right, this is an almost 6,000 pound limousine. And because of Klar and BMW's really competent use of all the electromechanical systems, you're doing something that like you probably wouldn't not be able to do it like a Genesis G90 I, or an S-Class. I would agree with you. Like that, that's really where this thing separates itself from the competition is. You put it under relax. Uh, I closed all the shades <laughs> on myself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really do think that this, this car is able to oh, still do the luxury car things. most luxurious part about my drive. connection with BMW <laughs> start with the creation of yeah. the 18 BMW up yeah. With the digital art mode, I have the chance to cooperate again <laughs> and integrate my art into the software of the car. I think it is a kind of a designate between BMW and Tell me, Chow Fei, tell me how I'm special. The overall idea of my creation, Content Garden, is that I want to draw a way of interconnecting no. my... I feel important. Sorry, what were you saying? <sighs> the thing that this brand does better than everybody else is they have the longest pedigree for making great sedans, right? This is what they do best. So the things that are left over from the old days of great BMW sedans is it still does a great job at the limit while still being a good luxury car. And that's something that almost nobody else can do. Where it's changed now is, you know, we just got out of a bunch of different brands of luxury cars. This is so synthetic. You know, it's great when you're going straight. It's super soft. It's comfortable. When you try to drive it hard, it still responds. But steering is, like, really, really dead. There's nothing there. Brake cal. Brake calibration is one of the worst in the transition now because now you have a hybrid drivetrain, right? Like, there's some regen there. There's the transition between 
electric and gasoline. There's the weird things the transmission's doing. So there's shuddering when it goes basically engine off back to on. There's the transmission juddering as it kind of like re-engages the engine to the, I mean, everything, all the background stuff that's going on is not seamless. You notice it all the time when it's going on. And the fact that your inputs don't feel natural, like brake pedals drives me nuts on here. It just does not feel right. Anytime you push on it, you never really feel a linearity in how it's gripping the actual the brake discs. It's just like kind of there, then all the way there, and then you can never really predict it. And that's what's really drove me more nuts about this car when you're not going straight and you're really using it. Um, it's not perfected, and I think that's just indicative of this generation of car. They're trying to do so much on the back end of, of getting you know the hybrid part working, and it's a worse car for it in my perception. This it's, should be bought as either a regular six. Yes, it's slower, but it is cheaper. Or at least here in the U.S., because you don't have all the emission stuff. Get a V8. Yeah, it, you it can afford a V8. It's a hundred and forty thousand dollar car. You can afford worse fuel economy, particularly in a vehicle like this. Yeah. I will say, because we did an i7 video, which you were not in. Yeah. I, I, I drove that for that video with our, with our our lovely Chris acting as my chauffeur. Yeah. Um, I think in this class of car, having been in a lot of these cars and have family members who own executive limousines like this, they make the most sense as gas products. Well, yes, you don't have the ultimate refinement of the EV for a long distance cruising. I need to get somewhere immediately tomorrow, you know, 100 miles an hour, and I don't want to stop. That's that's where these cars are amazing. You don't need to stop on the highway. You can drive like seven hours in this thing, yeah, because it's so comfortable, so quiet. There's zero fatigue. You don't need to pull over, right? And you, and when you do, it takes you th three minutes to fill this thing up, and you get to keep going. I think this as a V8 would be a really compelling lease product for someone who wants all of this luxury, all of the interior gimmicks. But the things that also make BMW so great yeah, as well. Yeah, there, there is, it is a really good balance product in that way. So the pros are, the ride quality is exceptional. It's ability for the dampers and suspension and rear wheel steering and all those things to do the things all the way up to 10 tenths, unlike other luxury cars, is great. Um, while still giving you the seat comfort, the actual electronics work really well. Despite its gimmickiness, everything works well in here. Um, and if you get the yeah. V8 drivetrain. Yeah, then it, it really eliminates some of the problems that I have with this. The judderiness, the jerkiness, the drivetrain growl in the back end. You know, it, it, there's so many things going on. I think it's distracting you from the actual luxury sanctuary it's supposed to be. Um, and the drivetrain is definitely something. If you're looking at this car, you need to drive every drivetrain option to figure out which one it connects with you the best. But that's where I'm going to leave it, Jack. All right, well, that let's head into the bottom box, sir. Thank you. Final thoughts on the BMW 7 Series, specifically the 750e. Jokes aside, I do think this is a very, very impressive car. If you can look past or like some of the BMW styling as well, I think this is probably the most compelling vehicle in its class of big executive limousines. Cars like the S-Class, the S8, the G90, and some other vehicles. The 7 Series, in many ways, is a step ahead of all of them. You can maybe argue the S-Class is quieter and potentially more comfortable, but the 7 Series, I think, is a more complete car in many ways. It has the handling element of it down better and the implementation of the interior technology. While it is every bit as gimmicky as the S-Class, I drive, which in these types of cars you have to interact, you have to interact with the infotainment, is not frustrating. It's very easy to use, and a lot of it falls away into the background and all you think about is this is really comfortable, this has got a great audio system, it handles well, it's really quiet. Those are the things that you most think about when you're behind the wheel of this car. Drivetrain, clearly Mark and I both talked about it. I think the, the plug-in hybrid variant of this, at least for the US, is the wrong choice. You should get the V8. It's already really expensive. This thing's $135,000. Get the V8, have that full executive super speed sedan thing experience down and you'll absolutely love this thing. Yes, it depreciates like an absolute rock. Yes, you know, in five years, you're not gonna wanna own this thing, but if you're the man or woman, the John and Susan businesses of the world, 
you can afford this thing, and all you want is the ultimate limousine to roll around in and go to and from the country club and work. It's your meetings where you gotta lay people off. It is an incredible car. So with that, thanks for watching, hope to see you soon. Thank you.